Merton 1977 uh, set out a framework for analyzing uh, deposit insurance and loan guarantees. Um, so of interest here is the a discussion previously um, relating to estimating the probability of default and using figures from Bank of Ireland I estimated that the and the Merton model uh, the probability of default using using distance to default was less than 1% so 0.81% um, of interest here and of also of relevance is given the recent financial crisis uh, governments very often stand on the line uh, to back um, financial institutions when they flounder this is something that's been observed as both sides of the Atlantic throughout the British Isles throughout continental Europe uh, governments have tended to intervene and bail out banks so Northern Rock uh, AIG the Fannie Mae Freddie Mac um, many institutions either directly or indirectly have been bailed out uh, through government intervention and governments uh, even though there may be explicit forms of insurance like the, the FDIC in the US very often when a crisis occurs uh, the type of guarantees and the type of protections government make available to financial institutions are not limited by those explicit guarantees. In fact, in the Irish instance, guarantees very often took the form of very global, across the board guarantees. So uh, all bank debt uh, received a blanket uh, guarantee, including some subordinated debt um, in the Irish case. So for the the lead players, Bank of Ireland, Allied Irish Banks, all received a kind of blank protection from the government. So, a uh, question arises, uh, how do we, um, in a kind of actuarial type framework, estimate the value of those type of guarantees? And, of course, the point to start would be just look at deposit insurance and loan guarantees and uh, this is something that probably uh, has there is now renewed interest in given the actions of different governments different jurisdictions during the financial crisis um, the starting point here is um, Merton sets out um, an options framework and he notes that a uh, put option is a type of guarantee uh, protecting against a drop in the value of an asset. So at its most basic, uh, a put option is equal to the difference between some fixed level and an asset price. And if the asset price falls below a given level, um, the put option serves to... Um, uh, protect against drops in asset prices. Now, uh, we could consider this also by going back to the analysis that we had previously, um, and we could, in fact, uh, go back to Merton 1974, where he makes very clear that the value of a shareholder's position could be represented as a call option the maximum of an asset minus its liability or the, ma the uh, maximum of the assets in a company minus the debts of the company and from the debt holders position they have a risk-free asset um, but they are short a put option on the, the uh, assets of the company and um, again this could be viewed as equity could be represented as call option but the, the uh, bondholder position could be re represented as a risk-free asset combined with a short put option on the value of the assets where the exercise uh, here is L. If we 
using the framework outlined here, Martin 1977, um, uh, his notation here is given as B, the level, the liabilities, this would be an L, and V here would denote the assets, the value of the assets. And again, in uh, using a Black Scholes type framework, the time value if this is the intrinsic value when no time remains, when we are looking at this type of protection or financial arrangement with some period before uh, maturity uh, occurs or expiration occurs, then we can re represent this uh, guarantee as a put option. And x1 and x2 here um, we have to be careful, x1 is equivalent to negative d1 and x2 would be equivalent here to, to negative d2. So just going back and comparing like against like, we might uh, consider the, if you like, the guarantee as equivalent to a put option. And if we were to use this notation and use n to denote normal cumulative probability, for a put option, the exercise E negative RT N negative D2 minus the asset value N negative D1. So in the framework that we have here, X1 is really a negative D1 and X2 is equivalent to negative D2. So, so again, just to see that, uh, X1 is like a negative d1 x2 is equivalent to negative d2 d1 d2 being estimated in the usual way so using that framework or that notation uh, what's written here maps into our estimation a little bit differently um so might note that now whole um merton 77 goes on and develops this guarantee expressed as a proportion of the exercise discounted at R uh, for the time period. And he reconfigures the model so that the guarantee is expressed as the, if you like, the per dollar cost or um, the percentage cost. Um, so if you like, uh, G denotes the put option divided by the level of debt, where D is the discounted debt, so the current value of the debt today or the exercise. And um, that then implies that we can estimate uh, the value of the guarantee as normal cumulative probability of H2 which is like negative d1 and 1 over d. So we divided, if you like, um, if we go back to the previous setup here, we divide um, v here by d, right? And we find that we have 1 over d. Uh, and again, uh, the normal cumulative probability of H1, where H1 and H2 are given. So also tau is introduced in here, and tau is equivalent to sigma, so the black Scholes uh, sigma, so the variance here times t is also introduced. Okay, so uh, let's look at Merton's results then. Uh, what he says is the following, if uh, deposits to assets, if a government or some third party decides to guarantee uh, a bank's deposits and loans, then the cost of those guarantees can be quite substantial. Uh, and this is, ex this is uh, quite true when we find that the level of um, volatility is high and also so when so tau is sigma squared by t 
So it's a uh, two black Scholes parameters combined together. So for longer time periods and for higher level of volatilities, increase if this magnitude is increased, we generally find that the cost of insurance increases. And the cost of insurance here, cost of deposit insurance, is for one dollar. So for smaller amounts of volatility combined with time, uh, tau here is, t here is given as one year, right, um, in this particular example. Uh, but n we notice that as this increases, then the cost of insuring deposits increases. Um, if we have a situation where a bank has uh, deposits to assets, so in other words, that the, that the equity is about 5%, of the bank's balance sheet. Uh, let's say we have a relatively small, a simple balance sheet. We have assets, deposits, equity, and deposits represent 95% of assets, and the remainder then must be made up of equity, which is 5% equity. The costs for more elevated level of tau, the cost of insurance increases. So we can see here that. Uh, Insuring one dollar here costs one cent, one point two zero nine cent, which is quite substantial. So you're, if you're, um, for one hundred dollars, insuring for one year, that's equivalent to paying one dollar to re receive the commercial value of that guarantee is one point two uh, dollars. So again, uh, and where there's no equity guaranteeing a bank um, at these more elevated levels of volatility uh, could cost three dollars for one hundred dollars of of deposits so this can be substantial so let's have a look at the numbers how they might be worked out and try to provide some kind of uh, intuition um, my starting point here is I um okay I use first of all uh, uh I I take uh the black shoulds parameters and I just set up so if you like uh the put here doesn't incorporate a reference uh, to tau right so the basic idea here is I set out the black shoulds framework and I work out the value of a put option for this level of for these parameter inputs and the formula here black scholes put the black scholes put if we can check this out black scholes put this code i took from carry back by the way uh, it's just a standard uh, black scholes implementation okay so the put is the exercise n Two where n two is in this instance uh, applications norm this negative d two, and n one is uh, n negative d one norms this n d one. So it's e negative r t exercise times n negative d two minus e negative q t times s n negative d one. For the purposes of this estimation, q is going to be given as zero. Right, so Q and the interest rate, in fact, I'm going to just take as being equal to zero. Okay, so if we compare table one against the actual results that I have here that implement that B, uh, VBA function, if I implement the pot option using the BSM pot with those parameter inputs, I find the value of the pot is 0 0.00464, so that's the Black Scholes pot. When I divide that value by e to the power of the risk-free rate times H8 one year multiplied by C8, which is the exercise, the value for the insurance here is equivalent to what I obtained in the table. In other words, the value of the guarantee is equivalent to this. 